We talk about long-term fundamentals for gold on our show a lot, but it's just as important to understand the short-term technicals so you won't be caught off guard by moves up and down without notice. Gary Wagner, editor of thegoldforecast.com, is here to do just that today, break down the short-term technicals. Gary, it's a pleasure to have you on. We are talking all things charts today. You like charts. I like charts. So let's start with the chart that you've brought in for us, and then we'll move into a few charts that I prepared for, uh, for us to discuss. The first one you have here is a very interesting chart. The 50-day moving average of gold and the 100-day moving average of gold and you're showing these two lines together. The yellow line is the 50-day uh, moving average, and the 100-day moving average is the blue line. And they've had a pretty consistent differential over the last couple of months. Can you explain that pattern and what we're seeing today? Yeah, the pattern that we'll discuss today is called a death cross. It's a Western chart pattern. And the reason it's called that is because when the short term moves below a longer term chart, it forms an X just like the uh, skull and bones. But here's what I find most interesting. If you look at the uh, lower left hand side, what you'll see is towards December of last year into January of this year, we had an inversion and inversion meaning that we had the longer term chart, the longer term moving average above the shorter term. But then we got what is called a golden cross. The golden cross simply means that the shorter term is crossed above that. At that point, really January through about August and September, you can see that it almost formed a par parallel channel line with a differential of about $60 between those two averages. It widened briefly in August, really September, and then we saw the 50 days start to really reflect the lower pricing. It's more sensitive, obviously, than the 100 day. And when you see that, you wait to see if you're actually going to get that cross. The cross is an indication and a technical chart pattern that signals that we could potentially see a rather sharp drop in pricing. Now, for equities, technicians tend to use the 50 day against the 200 day. But using the 50-day against the 100-day is an acceptable variation of this type of chart pattern. And so yesterday was the first day where the 50-day actually moved below it. Today, I think we're down about 13 or so dollars in the futures market. And so what we're starting to see is not only has it crossed below it, but now the differential is beginning to widen. And it is reliable but it's not always the gospel. In other words, we can show you points in time in which you'll get a cross and then a cross right back. But in the case of what we've seen is, is we've had that solid parallel line all the way up. Very unusual to get that for that kind of period of time. And now that they've crossed, it says that at least on a technical basis, we could see gold have some weakness. Gary, you mentioned that this cross indicates a potential sharp drop how sharp is this drop exactly? How far can we go? Well, typically on a 50 to a 100 day, we are pegging up current support at about 1845. We're trading at around 1870. Wouldn't surprise me if we went back to test that particular price point. The reason we're looking at that as a level of support is it is the 38% Fibonacci retracement from the move from March of when it was at $1,450 up to the record high, uh, $2,088. So we're using that long data set to come up with these different Fibonacci levels. Resistance is at the 23, and we do see support, potential support, and I believe major support at approximately uh, 1850, 1845. Does the chart pattern indicate a timeline for you, Gary? It never does. It's not so much about time. What it is, is it's an indication that short term momentum has slowed. Can you tie in some fundamentals behind why that's happening right now? Absolutely. I think that the major reason we're seeing weakness in gold recently is that waiters have been anticipating an additional fiscal stimulus bill to be passed by Congress, Senate and the administration. Of course, that hasn't happened. And that is what has put pressure 
on gold. And that's what that's a reflection of. Another interesting thing, and we'll talk about it in a little bit, is how the dollar has reacted uh, and gold. Okay, Gary, this ties in well with our next portion of the segment, which is the three charts that I prepared. So we talk about gold as serving three primary purposes, store of value and wealth, safe haven asset, uh, a hedge against the dollar and a hedge against inflation. So we've got all three things. The first chart shows gold versus the VIX index as an indicator or an illustration for gold as a safe haven asset. And the point of this chart that I'm trying to make Gary, is that gold does not always have a perfect correlation with fear, which in this case is gauged by the VIX index. So you'll see that the GLD, which I've used as a proxy for gold, uh, is an orange, and the blue chart, the blue line rather, indicates the VIX index. You'll see periods in the past, particularly from 2017 to 2018, where the correlation is held, but it's more or less broken down this year. So I wonder what you think about gold as a safe haven asset in this sense. Does this, does this definition hold? At, as you said, at times it does, at times it doesn't. If you look at that chart, you'll see a rather large spike in the VIX itself. And I think that that occurred at the point in which we had dollar weakness first coming into the market. And then we had dollar strength and the dollar strength was as the market sold off, recently it has been going up for the last uh, what week or so, but prior to that, it was trading under pressure. And so as it traded under pressure, we had big downside moves in gold, especially considering uh, Monday, two weeks ago, when we saw a $100 drop or a week ago, excuse me. And so that is what is being reflected in that big spike in the VIX. Let's uh, talk about the next chart then, the dollar. So here we have the GLD versus the US dollar trade weighted index. So GLD once again is on the left hand side in orange and the trade weighted dollar is in blue. Uh, the dollar here is inverted showing an inverse correlation between the dollar and gold. This inverse correlation has been very strong in the first half of the chart between 2015 and 2018. Towards the end of 2018, early 2019, we're seeing this correlation break down. So we're seeing a lot of dollar strength going into this year, while at the same time, strength in the GLD, in gold. Can you explain this divergence? Absolutely. What you're witnessing towards the end of the chart, as these two lines really uh, move apart and move apart tremendously, is the fact that there is really one occasion when you will get uh, equities and gold moving in the same direction in tandem to the upside. And that is during periods of uh, Federal Reserve quantitative easing. And so you have a little bit of inflationary fears that come in. And what tends to happen is when you see the market itself in terms of that divergence, what it is reflecting is the fact that we have the Federal Reserve really actively doing quantitative easing. And it also reflects the fact that the Treasury Department allocated $3 trillion for the CARES Act, for the aid package to help uh, stabilize a contracting economy. So that leads us to our next and final chart, which is gold versus inflation. In this chart, we're showing the GLD ETF versus the TIPS bond ETF. TIPS stands for Treasury Inflation Protection Security. And the TIPS is a proxy for inflation, and it is a gauge for inflation expectations, not actual CPI inflation. It's a gauge of what the market expects inflation to do. And I love showing this chart because the correlation between the two variables has been pretty much consistently perfect. I've crunched the numbers and the correlation has been 97% since 2015 with an R square of 93%. So mathematically, just from a mathematical perspective, Gary, this chart is the strongest of the three charts I've shown in terms of finding a correlation between gold and another variable. So is inflation really the strongest driver of gold, Gary? Well, inflation is one of the major drivers of gold, but the reason that we're seeing this inflationary expectations tick up is precisely what we just discussed, which is twofold. It's the Treasury Department allocating $3 trillion. Because in other words, what is inflation? Inflation is when the dollar buys you less. The dollar becomes devalued. 
And so when you have quantitative easing and a large expenditure by the treasury, that is when you get this type of scenario. We are in unusual times. Uh, the country, the globe is facing a pandemic and it has affected the economies worldwide. And we're seeing that reflection in terms of inflation expectations because each government has been allocating massive expenditures to stabilize their economy. Uh, here in the United States, we allocated a tremendous amount, largest budget deficit in history. And that's what you're seeing in that chart. So you're right, Gary, the inflation expectations have been rising since late 2018, along with a strengthening of the dollar. But if we look at the last few weeks to a few months of the chart here, we'll see a sort of decline in inflation expectations and bringing down gold prices. So what do you make of that? Where do you see inflation headed from here? Well, again, I see inflation being rather steady up until there's an, an announcement about future expenditures uh, from the Treasury and an aid package being passed. Because what is the greatest uh, mover of inflation? It is when the dollar becomes devalued. And when we allocate tremendous amounts of funds, the net result is it does have downside pressure on the dollar. What we've noticed over the last couple of days, and maybe as long as a week, is we have seen the dollar moving lower and gold moving lower at the same time, which is highly unusual. So Gary, what you're saying is that the long-term fundamentals for the bullish side of the story for gold is still intact, but short-term, we're seeing a death cross. Absolutely correct. I believe that traders have been waiting for some sort of fiscal stimulus. It seems unlikely that that will come this year. And there are a lot of programs that begin to expire towards the end of December. You have the moratorium on evictions and foreclosures. You also have a lot of the unemployment benefits running out. There was talk this morning about potentially having some sort of uh, fiscal stimulus by the 13th of December. And this statement was made by Nancy Pelosi. Whether or not that will happen is something we'll have to wait and see, but I believe that as long as we're waiting for fiscal stimulus, we will see steady to lower pricing. Once the announcement is made and we know the size and scope of the aid package presented that can be passed by both the House and the Senate, that is really going to propel gold to higher pricing. If it doesn't come this year, we will probably be waiting throughout until the inauguration of a uh, uh, Joe Biden, the uh, new president of the United States, and his actions. How are you trading this market then? What trades are you putting on? Currently, we are flat. Uh, we went long a little while ago. Luckily, we raised our stop on Friday before the big drop on Monday and took a small profit. But I have been sidelined in both gold and silver for the last week. Thanks very much, Gary. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Pleasure as always. Thank you for watching Kiko News. I'm David Lin.